Hey y'all, Nick with CC Minis here, and today we're gonna see just how big of a story we can fit into a tiny little diorama. Let's start with the foundation. This is a little battery case that I don't really use anymore. I like its small form factor and nearly perfect rectangularness. All it needs is a bit of cleaning with a razor after I've split it in two, and then some quick sanding before it's ready to work with. Paint has a hard time sticking to smooth plastic like this, and roughing it up provides some good tooth for paint and goops to grab onto. Speaking of goops, here's one of my favorites from Vallejo. I applied it to the base using a tiny katana that a friend gave to me a long, long time ago. This goop, black lava texture, is basically just wet sand. And when it dries, it's just like dry sand. But before it's dry sand, it's something magical. We'll get to that in just a little bit. Let's set that to the side to dry and talk about stories. So what exactly is a story? Dictionary.com defines the word as an account of imaginary or real people and events told for entertainment. And I mean, that's all well and dandy, but in a visual medium, we don't have the words to tell a story. So we have to think a bit differently. To put it simply, we need to show that something's happening or happened or will happen. You following me? In classical painting, the thing that usually happened was a well-known tale. With those stories, characters, and the narrative is already well-known to the viewers. But what if you don't have pre-known characters or tales to tell? Without those elements, you need to display the story in a clear and easy-to-read manner. You need to show a cause and an effect. There are a lot of great artists doing exactly this now with miniatures and dioramas. Joshua Lay is an expert in showing stories of things that have already happened. He uses characters and environments in his dioramas that make the viewer wonder how this came to be. What happened? Joseph Anthony Fernandez made this incredible piece which tells two distinct stories. The first story, how did this giant spaceman corpse come to be? And the second is of this man and his companion discovering the giant. Boilai Hobby Time and 52 Miniatures have great examples of stories showing suspense and something happening in the future. These stories show the action right before it's about to happen. If you want to check out any of the artists that I mentioned here, I have links down in the description below. The story we are building today is going to have just a few elements. The sandy, rocky terrain, the sign, and a hand. Ooh, sorry Rufus. Before we can add in those bits though, we need to let the sand dry more. You know, so the pieces actually have something to stick to. So I'm gonna leave this overnight and come back in the morning. Remember how I told you that this goop has a magical third pliable state? Well, here it is. So after about eight hours of drying, or two times the amount of sleep I get on any given night, we can sort of shape it to our liking. I use the blunt end of some circle cake cutters to add in some rings that get larger and larger from a point on the base. Are you starting to see what this story is gonna be about? Ah, poor Rufus. The circle cutters didn't get quite small enough though, so I added in one more ripple towards the center with the back of the paintbrush. Then I added in a center ripple hole thing. With the ripples in place, it's time to add in our props and put the story together. The stage is set. A vast desert with a sign warning of danger. Quicksand is in the area and has claimed many travelers before, and on this day, it will claim another. Oh, poor dear Rufus. At this point, Rufus succumbing to quicksand is pretty apparent, but I bet we can push this story a bit further with the way we paint it. Let's give that a shot. I start with a simple gray primer, then painted a nice orange to red gradient over the whole base. I want this to appear to be a desert that is during a harsh sunset. This way the bright setting sun is blocking out the front of the sign, making its dire warning impossible to see to wanderers just before dusk. Poor, poor Rufus, what a terrible time to walk in the desert alone. To achieve this look I did a light spraying of dark blue from the front side of the sign. I was sure to keep the angle of the spray nearly perpendicular to the ground. This way the spray should only hit where the shadows would be falling if the light were coming from the opposite direction. This will act as a nice map for me to go in with my brush and use some dark blue to reinforce and cut out the shadows. I started with the ripples and then slowly made my way around the rocks. At first I just hit the sides away from the sun or the deepest recesses, leaving the opposite side nice and bright. Speaking of bright things in the darkness, I need to thank my patrons. Thank you all so much for supporting me and the crazy projects that I do. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Especially you. You know who you are. 
If you want to help support the channel, there is a Patreon link down below. And of course, if financial support just isn't your thing, it's totally free to subscribe and hit that like button. As I progressed with the shadows, I started to build in some shapes where the different objects on the diorama would be blocking out the light. A nice long one from the hand goes here. Each of these rocks get one as well. I was careful to make sure that the shadows were all facing the same direction. This will help sell the illusion of direct light hitting the piece. If you can't tell already, the color choices for this piece were largely inspired by the diorama I showed earlier from Joseph Anthony Fernandez. The contrast of cool and warm tones with stark, sharp shadows was perfectly executed in his piece. I've been wanting to try something similar ever since I first saw it. Once I was happy with the shadow placements and shapes, I used a slightly darker blue to reinforce them. Then I pulled that orange color back out to do some highlighting and clean up the areas where the shadow spilled over too much on the bright spots. Then I used a brighter sky blue to do some highlighting on the shadowy bits. This isn't the most realistic, but it helps differentiate the different elements and makes things pop just a little bit more. Then I painted on the warning sign that poor, poor roof is missed. Hopefully it can warn some others when it's daytime. Last step was to paint the edges with some black 1.0, just, you know, regular black paint. And I called it good. Thanks for watching everyone. If you want to watch me paint another diorama with a simple story, here's a link to a favorite of mine. Until next time, as always, stay healthy and take care. Bye bye